What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why we fail and how to overcome it. And the reason for this episode, now that we're in February, is because I haven't seen anybody as enthusiastic when it comes to discussing their New Year's resolutions and how hardcore they're going with their ambitions. Yeah, that's something that I know Ashley talks about all the time. I mean, more people fail than succeed on their New Year's resolutions. And it's kind of a a joke in so many instances. Yeah. And I mean, in the past, we've talked about why that's the reason I don't believe in New Year's resolutions at all. I think it, it is a joke. It is something laughable for anybody to decide that they're going to postpone their goals until the beginning of the year or use the beginning of the year as an excuse to actually work on something, that one thing that they'll do one day. And there's actually a term for this. And I'm going to guess that as you listen to this and you, Clint, you've never heard it before. And it's called a rambashura. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Sanskrit, but it's a classical language that belongs to the Indo-European languages. And that's where the term a rambashura comes from. And essentially what it means is you go all in, you're hardcore, you're pumped up, you're killing it, and then it dwindles down and the motivation seems to go out the window. So I guess essentially a Rambashura means to be a hero in the beginning. And I thought it was so cool that there's actually a word for the thing that most people partake in, right? Mm -hmm. Going all in. And of course, this isn't just related to New Year's resolutions, but given the timing of the year, that's what brought it up for me. And we've all we've all been there before, you know, even if we're not talking about New Year's resolutions where we have ambitions and goals and something that excites us. And a great example of this is if you've ever been to a seminar or a conference and the energy is just so fire and you're just so happy and excited and everybody is sharing and exchanging that same energy and all smiles and you have a plan and, you know, maybe you go home and you think about it. But then those thoughts start to take the back burner and they become thoughts that are a little bit deeper in your mind. And all of those ambitions, it can be difficult to maintain versus the energy that you had at the onset of going to a seminar, for example. Yeah. And I think everybody's guilty of finding that excitement in the in the moment and really feeding into it and that's a it's a great marketing thing in so many instances and that's how these companies thrive and then once you settle down and actually start evaluating everything either you don't it doesn't hold up to your expectation or it's something you don't put in the work yeah you're not really willing to pay the cost yeah exactly another one that's coming up for me because we're in February, the month of love is uh, a great example of a Rambashura is relationships. And the way that many of us treat a relationship at the onset, right, when you're courting somebody, or you're dating somebody or becoming boyfriend, girlfriend with somebody, or how it feels to be in the beginning of a marriage with somebody, versus how things might change and evolve and dwindle down a Rambashura later on down the road in a relationship. Yeah, and I think we can really kind of hone into any instance in life. It's you're excited in the beginning and and it's learning those techniques to where it doesn't fizzle out or it doesn't kind of fade away in those instances. Yeah, and the Romans actually taught us that getting stuck in the middle is called medius and getting stuck in the middle of a rugged mountain, ochris, is how we get the word mediocrity. And so I think that the rut that we often find ourselves in when we're suffering from a Rambashura is that we're focusing too much on all of the big things. We're focusing on doing all of the things and perhaps we don't itemize a to-do list and we don't lay out a plan. And it's, it's as though it's as though one would want to start a business by going straight to the end and deciding 
all of the things that we have to do instead of focusing on the beginning stages. We know an individual who's at the onset of of his business venture and he went straight to product development. So he has a particular product that he's selling and he's already talking about all the people he needs to hire and yet he he hasn't even sold one unit of his product yet. So that's a great example of you know, going all in, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on a product and you are missing all of the channels in between because you're going straight to, you know, the hiring process when you're not there yet. And that excitement and that ambition, it it could be distracting as they say, love is blind. I believe when it comes to the aspect of Arambashora, it's very much the same thing. We become blindsided by seeing all of the grandiose and amazing shiny new things that we either choose not to see all of the hard work and all of the tasks that it takes in between, or we're oblivious. We're completely oblivious that we we miss those. And by doing that, that's when we often fail. Yeah, it's something, you, you know, you set your plan in place and, and you, you have to even seek outside input from friends, family members of what else do you see that's missing here that I need to do or what can I do to keep this moving forward and keep that excitement, not only in yourself, but then you're enticing that in excitement from other people. And then they can almost hold you accountable in those instances as well. Yeah. And we can twist this a little bit. And I think that a great strategy is by not focusing on the goal at all and instead to focus more on discipline because you can take any aspect of a goal that you might have at the beginning of the year or otherwise And just think for a moment, if you were to focus more on the discipline aspects of that instead of the goal, what would be the results in terms of success? It would probably be substantial in comparison. So we can break this down and give some examples here. And I think that when it comes to diet, that's something we all aspire or should want to aspire to be optimal in our lives. But Many people, Americans especially, don't realize how malnourished we are. So when it comes to the discipline element of this, I think that by adding instead of subtracting, and you might have heard that before, it is so vital. And for me personally, this has been something that I have been working towards, and it's adding more protein. As somebody who doesn't eat red meat or pork and who's very finicky with her diet, It is quite difficult for me to make sure that I'm getting in the quantities of protein that I should. But given the strength training regimen that I'm on right now, it's very important. So instead of feeling like I'm limiting myself, I'm focused completely on adding. And for me, that looks like, okay, I know how many grams of protein I want to eat every day. So I'm focused on that. And anything else is either good or bad. And for right now, I'm okay with that. And by, by changing that and just making that one shift, it's been about probably four weeks now that I've done that. And it's been incredibly beneficial for me when it comes to my overall sense of well-being, but also my, my quality of recovery. And when it comes to fitness, let's say that you know what you want to do and what, what you, maybe you have this vision in your mind of what you want to have your physique look like or what you want to feel like or what you're comparing yourself to. But instead of focusing on strength training, and Clint, we've had this discussion many times, instead of focusing on strength training seven days a week, what if you made sure that you were practicing your discipline so much to the extent that you were going to walk a minimum of 30 minutes every single day and anything extra would be a bonus? By doing that, not only would we not be setting ourselves up for a rambishora, right? But we would also make sure that we're getting in 30 minutes more per day than we would be if we decided that we were going to go all in and then it was too exhausting and we created the excuses to not do anything at all. Just like reading a book and reading one page of a book or one chapter of a book every single day. You know, we we can use family time as an example and you know you want to spend more time and be more present with your family, but it's going to be impossible for you to do that because you're going to have all of the excuses that you have right now. And if we start off small, we can just have maybe one hour of shut day, shut down complete a day per week. And then that would be much more substantial than not doing anything at all for months at a time. Yeah. It's those, those little 
things that you do, they add up significantly, significantly over time and it creates that actual permanent change. Yeah. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. Don't get stuck in a Shora. Focus on the small things and discipline instead. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.